Thirdly, the Holy Eucharist is covenant. Now, covenant is extremely important. The word covenant has to do, and the Bible talks a lot about covenant. Covenant is a sacred contract that you enter in a solemn agreement that you enter into with another party. One of the best illustrations Dr. or Brother Miles talked about it this morning was the covenant that we make in marriage is for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, for sickness and in health. And so when you appear, none of you are married here, I guess, with me. I, yeah, you're married, aren't you? Yes, yeah, certainly. But most of you, anybody else married here? I don't know that there are. Tell me the secret. Maybe you wish that you were. However, it's better to be single than you wish you were single. I can assure you of that. So you, should be, you just need to be sure that you're going in the direction that you need to be going. But the third has to do with covenant. God has entered into a solemn covenant with us. It is a solemn contractual agreement between two parties, both of whom bind themselves to certain duties and who receive certain blessings. In marriage, you bind yourself to each other, right? By solemn vows and commitment before God. Now, God has established a covenant which we call the covenant of grace. It's an overarching covenant that all who believe in Jesus our Lord will be saved if they will trust in Him. These covenants, the Old Testament covenant and the New Testament covenant, are essentially the same. The Lord Jesus, the night that He was crucified, tells us that the blood, the, the, the wine, represents the blood of the New Covenant. This is the New Covenant in His blood and body for us. Now we enter into covenant with God, and He enters into covenant with us. Now, if you're ever going to be converted to God, you enter into some solemn covenant. It's not just feeling good, not just feeling squiggly down at the altar. It's just like Brother, Brother Miles said, love is not just an emotion. That will come at times, but it will soon leave. But it's covenant. I vow before God, I will be the Lord's. Everyone was right on the line. I will be the Lord's. I will serve Him whatever it costs. Live or die, sink or swim, put me up, put me down, put me in, put me up. I will be the Lord's. Do you really mean that this morning? Now, you certainly made that covenant with God when you were saved. You may not have thought it that way, but you made some promises to Him, right? Amen. And He made promises to you. Now, in the Eucharist, we renew that vow. Every time we come to the Lord's table, God is doing something and we are doing something. The covenant that we have with God is expressed under two terms, a sign and a seal. The signs and seals of the covenant of grace. Now by signs, we mean the bread and the wine are symbols. Symbols are extremely important. There's not an American flag hanging here on the wall, but we Americans take our flag very seriously, right? We don't appreciate people who burn our flag and, and misuse it and, and spit upon it and, and tear it up and and desecrate it. Now the flag, materially, is just a bit of cloth, right? But it's infinitely more than that. It is a symbol of an unseen reality, right? And that's what the bread and the wine are. And so, the bread and the wine are symbols. And we've talked about that already. Here is the communion chalice, the cup. Here is the wafer. The wafer, the bit of bread that we take in communion. These are signs to us. We've already talked about that. But the bread is a symbol of the broken what? Body of the Lord Jesus, right? The wine is a symbol of the shed blood of the Lord Jesus. It's really important. In fact, the Bible says we dare not come unworthily. We need to examine ourselves. Because if we eat and drink unworthily, we eat and drink damnation to our own souls. We make ourselves guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Now, I don't, and I know a lot of kids have heard those words, and that they, they become afraid to take the Lord's Supper. Don't be afraid. If you have a heart for God, you're welcome. This is the Lord's feast, and you are welcome. It is He who invites you to come to the table. But what it means there is, if you come with deliberate sin upon your conscience that you are not willing to confess, if you have a nasty attitude towards your roommate or your neighbor, if there is anything in your life that you are deliberately harboring, you need to get it fixed up before you come to the Lord's table. Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. But you are welcome. In fact, it's an offense to God for His people not to come to the table. You read in 1 Corinthians, 
Paul writing about unworthy participation. He was talking about people who were foolishly misusing the Lord's Supper. They were actually getting drunk at the Lord's Supper. And Paul said, it's a damning thing for you to do that. To do it lightly and irreverently. Take this with extreme seriously. Because these are holy symbols, signs of the body and the blood of Christ. And so, as symbols, the bread and the wine represent the body and blood of Christ. As seals, as, as a seal, the Lord's Supper is God's solemn promise. God promises something in the Lord's Supper, and you and I are promising something. A promise. I'll give you an example. I married my present wife. She's my second wife. My first wife was killed in a car accident out in Nebraska a number of years ago, and I married Carol, who used to work here. She used to be the, the, the uh, admissions officer. She's a lovely person. I thought of Brother Miles. I think Carol's the most unselfish person. She babies me outrageously, and probably a lot more than I should let her, though I enjoy every minute of it. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but when she and I were going to get married, we went down to the courthouse and we were issued a document with the seal of the state of Ohio, a gold seal, pressed into the paper. Have you seen those kind of seals? What that means is that seal is a solemn attestation or oath that our marriage is valid by the laws of the state of Ohio. You follow me? That's the seal. That is the promise. And that's what this is. When you take the Lord's Supper, God is promising you that He will be faithful to you, that He will not abandon you, even if you don't feel religious, as long as you're walking with Him and doing His will. You are His child, He is yours, and you don't need to worry about Him flopping around, being your friend one day and your enemy the next. Are you with me? God promises, and you are promising. In turn, you are, when you take the bread and wine, you are taking an oath to God, and God is taking an oath to you. God swears by himself that he will be faithful to you. And oh, how I need that, and how you need that. We're so fluttering and faltering sometimes, at least I am. There are times that my faith is strong, and it lays hold of God's promises. And there are other times I feel pretty fickle and pretty faltering. Does anybody identify with me there? But when I come to the Eucharist, here is God's solemn, objective sign. Here as I take the cup and as I take the bread, God is pledging to me. He is my God. He is my faithful God who loved me so much he sent his son to die for me. And in response, I am promising something to him. I am promising that I will be faithful. I will. And so the third thing we're talking about here is covenant. We covenant with God and so that's why we say that the Lord's Supper is an outward sign, an outward symbol of an inward grace, and a means whereby we, we receive the same. God is vowing to us His faithfulness, but we're renewing His vows to Him. 